These aren't the stories your mother told you. No, these are the other stories. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of The Other Stories is Moonlit Secrets, written and narrated and produced by James Barnett, a.k.a. Jimmy Horace. The waves lap at the sand, an unstoppable force drawing each granule into its watery embrace, only to bring it back again like an eternal, inconsistent alternation. The moon dances along the flowing undulations, sending quiet reflections in a spasmodic strobe. I break my hands through the sand and let it fall through my fingers and watch the minerals spill and blow in the breeze. The full moon sings. Its silvery tendrils distract me and its glow casts back a luminous silvery hue off his skin. Why does he look so peaceful laying in the sand staring at the stars? Are you sure this is what you want to do? He said. You see, my husband was never the pioneer of genuine ideas. He was a follower, and a damn loyal one at that. It was one of the reasons I fell in love with him so quickly. That and the fact that he would ask all the right questions to make sure you made the correct decision. Well, at least you believed it was the right decision by the time he said okay. We made this decision together, did we not? I say, pulling the car off the blacktop onto a crackling dirt road. The lights of the property are a beacon of light in the darkness after I turn the headlights off in the beat-up Ford Falcon I'd had since I was a teenager. Well, I don't think I agreed, but you do need to do something. I worry about you. Like I said to you before, I'm fine. Tell that to the neighbours putting up with your stench. You never leave the house anymore. I'm surprised we're here, to be honest. The last time you left the house, we... Okay, enough. It's bad enough you're here right now. What do you mean? It's just... I don't think you would approve. I can see his mind racing. He looks at me from eye to eye like he's desperately trying to find the answer to a difficult math problem. Don't look at me like that, Liam. His expression flashes pity before reassembling to a pensive, worried look. The left corner of his mouth slightly upturned in the way I love. This expression is part of the reason I fell for him. I'm not here to judge. Well, you're doing a great job of showing it. I turn back to face the crackling road and quickly pull in beside a cluster of gum trees to provide cover from the moon's reflective light, lest the reflections give away our presence. I shift the stick into park and pull the handbrake. I stop and take a deep breath, both hands fixed on the steering wheel. I lose myself momentarily in a thought. A flash. Are you not feeling well? The voice is muffled. My eyes feel heavy. Hang on. Why are they closed? I snap them open. The car is off and I can smell the cold. The windows are starting to crystallize at the temperature drop. How long have I been asleep? You've been out of it for a couple of hours. I sniff and attempt to rub the sleep from my face and wonder if I asked that question out loud. Why didn't you wake me? We could have been caught. Would that really be the worst? I whip my head around to look at my husband, and he isn't there. Fucking typical. He makes a contentious statement and fucks off. A yellow blur peeks through the crystalline screen, a beacon drawing my attention. I slowly pull the latch on the door and it clicks with approval. A frozen chill creeps into the gap causing my body to shiver. I reach into the back seat and grab the black hoodie I specifically bought for this night. I take a step out of the car and use my hip to place pressure on the door to close it. The click is quieter than a mouse squeak. I turn to the house as I pull the hoodie over my shoulders and thread my hands in. Pulling the zipper as slowly as I can to prevent any sudden sound. You really think she would hear the zipper over this winter breeze? I take in a sharp inhale of breath in surprise and whirl around. Will you stop fucking doing that? Where did you disappear to? It gives that knowing smile again and my hardness melts. Just stay close, will you? Ken, I must ask, are you sure this is the right course of action? Damn well no it is, I snap. I trudge to the boot of the falcon and slowly pop it open. 
Grab what I'm looking for and click it shut. I begin to walk slowly towards the light in the window that caught my attention. A shooting star swings across the sky and momentarily takes my attention away from my target. I wish you would reconsider. Whether he was just speaking his thoughts out loud or literally wishing on a star was beyond me. But I was beginning to get frustrated at the resistance. It's you or her. You know that, right? He turns away. I know. I will choose you every time. You must know that. We can't be separated now. I wouldn't survive. I know that too. Then you know we must do this. He takes a step toward the house. I look up at the sky. The stars an amazing bright hue so clear in the winter sky. A velvet cushion pinpricked with dashes of light. How amazing it would be to dart around the universe. The sights you would see. Not to care for anything or of anything. No regrets. Well then, have you changed your mind? It's never too late. His voice is faded. A pocket of sound released in a bubble that hits me. We must do this. It's the only way to stay together. My footsteps slowly crunch the dirt. I step as softly as I can, but nature's foliage litters the ground. A natural form of defense and warning against intruders. We make it to the veranda stairs and I turn to face Liam before ascending the stairs. Now. He's disappeared again. Probably checking the back of the house. It's a ranch-style house on a few acres of land, so no fences. I understand the appeal of such houses, but have always wondered at the feelings of anxiety it would cause with no barrier from the outside world which could invade at any time. I chuckle a little at the realisation that I am one of those invaders. I slowly take a step on the first stair and a slight creak escapes into the night. The winter breeze does its best to disguise the sound and I am satisfied that I haven't been made. I continue the ascent and turn left to follow the veranda that wraps around the whole house towards the light that I saw as we arrived. The house itself is weatherboard and the yoke coloured paint that is lit up in the moonlight is peeling to reveal greying rotting wood underneath. I edge toward the lit window and as I near it I put my hand on the window's edge and move my head to peek inside. Another flash. Let's just go. Liam's voice whispers in my ear and my heart leaps in my throat. Fuck! I turn around, but he isn't there. Where the hell is he? He's going to get us caught. I look in the window and the room is empty. I can hear the murmur of talking, and briefly I see her figure walk past the door to the room with a phone held to her ear. Good. Distractions are good. I move to the next window. The room is in darkness. Please don't be locked. It lifts open silently with a little bit of effort. I step inside and slide it closed again. She hasn't actually done anything. Liam's voice sounds behind me. I spin around and whisper aggressively. Quiet! You'll make us both. She doesn't deserve it. You and I both know what will happen if... I'm done explaining. I love you with all my heart. I'm doing what is necessary to retain that. If you aren't going to be helpful, go and wait in the car. You know I can't do that. Then stay out of my way. I creep towards the slightly ajar door and can hear her voice drift through. I shift the weight in my hands and squeeze it in anticipation. I pull the door open slowly until there is enough room for me to slip through. I walk down the hall and hear her sit on the couch. I I don't know what to do. I hear her say as she sighs. Anyway, I should probably go. Lots to do and should get some rest before I report what I know tomorrow. I look at Liam and give him a knowing look. I move up behind her with stealth. I can see on her wall pictures and newspaper clippings. There are pictures of me inside my house. Me at the store purchasing goods. Me at the beach standing behind my car. This must happen. She knows it all. I raise my arm. The weight of the hammer feels like a dead weight and I struggle to bring it above my head. Okay, see you later. Yes, 
I miss him as well. I love you too. Bye. I hear the beep of the phone hang up and she lifts her head. A mirror is against the wall and we see each other. The look on her face betrays her fear and I swear as I bring the hammer down a look of acceptance. She screams loud, the noise filling the small cramped room. It's funny. For a second I thought I heard Liam scream as well and I can see the moon reflect in her eyes. The crunch of the impact restores the serenity of the room and all I can hear for a time is the blood rushing in my ears. My own heartbeat throbs and ebbs to a resting beat. It's over, I say to Liam. But again he appears to have disappeared. Who was she on the phone to? I slap the sand and get to my feet in the fast elastic motion. My body responds in anticipation of my thoughts. The goosebumps litter my skin and the fine hairs on my forearms stand on end and sway in the slight breeze. Can you imagine the power of the moon? I say. Power unmatched. I look down at Liam who is lying peacefully in the sand, his eyes only partly open. A red halo expands around his sweet face and a hammer lies in the sand. I love you. Never leave me. I turn to the sound of the voice and Liam stands next to me and stares into my eyes when they meet. I never will. I love you too. Let's get you home. I lift Liam and swing him over my shoulder and walk towards the car. Let's get you back to that rocking chair you love so much. You'll be safe there. As I close the boot, a flash invades the night. I look around, but can't find the source. Was that the moon? Or something else? I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Other Stories. Moonlit Secrets was written and narrated and produced by James Barnett, aka Jimmy Horace himself, with music by Tim Kulig and Boom Library, and Mayu and Tom Robson, and sound effects provided by freesound.org. The episode illustration was provided by Luke Spooner of Carry On House. A quick thanks to our community managers, Chaz Arch, Joshua Boucher, and his eyeless ones, Mary Pastrano and Cody Sarzasti. As to Joshua Boucher for helping with our submission reading. And of course to Ben Arrington for the ongoing explosion of content he fires out of his social media cannon. James Barnett is the producer of the Night Sound podcast and After the Gloaming. Search for them wherever you get your podcasts. You can catch other works of his at jamesbarnettcreative.com. The Other Stories is a production of the Story Studio Hawk and Cleaver and is brought to you with Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. That means don't change it, don't sell it, but by all means share the hell out of it. So, until next time. <laughs>